Kim here from CustomDollBaby.com. In a previous video, um, Rooting 102, Rooting Methods, I talked about three categories of rooting that represents what most reborn artists do um, when they're putting hair into their dolls. The second method we talked about was the root a loop and today I am rooting loops. So I wanted to zoom in and spend a little bit more time on how to root a loop uh, well and quickly. I think root a loop is a great method for beginners because it gives you a lot of control over where you're rooting and it's not too difficult to pick up. You can use almost any needle to do it so you don't have to worry about all the barbs and gauges and complexity that goes into needle shopping. I have three tips on how to root a loop um, as easily as possible. The first is to root straight hair. So mohair typically has a texture to it and to root a loop faster and better it helps if we go ahead and straighten that out. So as you know from previous videos mohair does tolerate flat ironing just try not to make too many passes over it because this may damage the hair. So a few slow and steady passes will take the waves and or curls out of your mohair. If it's already straight you can skip this step. The second trick for rooting a loop is to make your lock long. So this is an infant that I'm rooting, and in general I only need really this much hair sticking out of the scalp, but because I'm rooting a loop, I want twice that much because I'm rooting it from the middle. So I'm gonna cut this lock as close as I can to the top of the mohair. So I have a nice long lock. Last but not least, my third trick to rooting the loop is to make your lock smaller than what you would normally use for other rooting methods. This allows you to find your loops more easily and it helps you not to get too tangled up in what you're doing. All right, so I'm gonna find the middle of this hair. I'm gonna fold it in half and I actually like to twist it a half turn and hold that twist between my fingers. That way, I can keep my loops crisp and neat as I'm rooting. Okay. This is a 42 gauge crown needle. So it's a fairly tiny needle. Has one barb on each corner for three total. Some of the barbs are lower than the others. I don't know if we'll be able to catch this on the film. Maybe not. But there's one barb that sits really close to the tip of the needle. Not either of those two. That guy on the left. So what I'm gonna wanna do while I'm rooting my loop is to actually put my lowest barb facing to my right. So instead of putting it on the bottom, I'm gonna put it to the side because what I need it to do is to catch the end of my loop. Okay, so the barb's on the side so that it's catching the loop. And this helps to force that loop down into the vinyl. We're getting kind of microscopic here, so I apologize if it's not clear on the video. Okay, so those are the three tricks to rooting the loop. You need straight hair, you need long hair, and you want to hold less than you normally would so you don't get too tangled up. So with my bar facing to the right, I'm hooking each hair in my loop and pushing it down into the vinyl. If you end up with a few scragglers um, that are just short hairs from your lock or something that got pulled out, um, feel free to just get rid of those. One thing that I do when I'm rooting a loop is I'll sort of scrape the needle across the lock to separate out more loops. And the more frayed my loops are, the better because I can see each one individually, hook them to my needle and push them down in the vinyl. And it's up to you whether you wanna grab one loop or two loops or five loops or whatever. You have complete control over how much hair you grab and where you put it. Okay. When I'm rooting my loops, that's just so fun to say, what I like to do is for, hook the hair, push it down into the vinyl, and while the needle's still 
somewhere in the hole, pull away the rest of the lock. I have a tendency to hold my hair too tight and when I pull it, pull the rest of the lock away, I have a tendency to yank back out the hair I just rooted. So doing that while the needle is still in the hole will prevent you from doing that. When you're rooting a loop, you have control over how much hair you grab and where you put it. So this is one of my premium quality dolls. So I'm spacing the hair out a little more than I would for a masterpiece quality doll. Trying to stagger the hairs as much as possible as we go. And you might be able to see my rooting plan. I did that in pencil, Prismacolor, which I like quite a lot better than chalk. It doesn't rub off as easily, but it does rub off eventually, so I don't have to worry about making my lines very neat. Okay, and that is how it works. Um, part of the reason why you need long hair is not only because you're grabbing it from the middle, but because as you go, your loops kind of get bigger and bigger. The more you spread them out, the easier they are to see. And if your hair is too short, the more you pull out that loop, the less likely you are to be able to hold on to it because you're just gonna pull the hair clean out of the lock and you won't be able to grab it. So the tension on the hair is key. Twisting the base of your loop will help you to maintain the tension you need to get into the hair. All right, so it looks like we're still in focus, so I'm just gonna sit here and quietly root some more loops. all the way across the back of the head. I've gotten some questions about how I trim the hair, so I will quickly demonstrate my very crude hair cutting method. I do like to trim as I go because if there's any bald spots or anything that I need to tend to, I wanna do that while I'm in the position. Get to the head out of the bowl. I have this extra sock to further stabilize it, so I don't want it rolling around while I'm rooting. It just makes everything so much easier. It allows me to make fast, clean holes. Okay, I'm getting the rock rock rice out of the sock rice plus sock is rock um yeah okay the hair is still flat ironed in the area that i didn't trim yet so i'm just gonna brush it down get a sense of how it's gonna look so the other reason why i trim as i go is i have all this extra hair that's gonna get caught in the neck ring and when that happens it pulls the hair out so we don't want when you're cutting an infant's hair, the goal is that it not look like it's been cut at all. So we want to cut it as, uh, well, unevenly and at a layered angle. So the first thing I want to do is get my neckline. So I actually just brushed all the hair straight down. I'm going to take my scissors, pointing them upward. Never cut across, I always point them up so that you're snipping at little angles. And always take off less than you feel like you're gonna need to because it's easier to go back and trim more than it is to take off, or sorry, add back or reroute stuff that you cut off and you didn't mean to. So I'll just do a few passes along the bottom here. Still keeping my scissors in the upward position so that I'm cutting little angles and not creating blunt ends. So that's my neckline. And I can always go back and get that later. This is curly hair, so um, it's gonna have a tendency to get shorter than it already is when it curls back up. So I just need something to stabilize the head for a second. I think I would ordinarily do this in the ball. So hair gets longer as you approach the crown, so when you're trimming, you want to recreate that trend. So I'm just gonna brush the hair up and the other side has been trimmed already. So if you want to be very precise, you may set 
pick up your hair between two fingers, inclusive of the part that you already cut, and then trim them all to be even. Again, still making these little jagged snips that you cannot see. Let's try that. These little jagged snips. So it's feathered and light. Okay, the other way that I like to do it, which is again very crude, but it works, is to brush the hair out to the side so I can see it all and get a sense of that shape that I want. I want that angle so it's getting longer as it goes up. Maybe I'll hold it this way so you can see. So shorter as you go down, longer as you go up. So I'm holding my fingers at an angle. And again, don't cut yourself, but make very jagged snips. Man, I totally just cut myself. <laughs> don't cut it all the way up to your hand. So there's a little bit left. I'll try to put on the light so you can see it better. brush through it a few times to see. So I've got, you know, some hairs right over here that I just root it that are super long. So we're rooting our loops. So again, I'm gonna get that triangular shape that I want. Make sure the uninvolved fingers are out of the way because I do have a tendency to knit myself. And make that jagged edge. This is also great for uh, trimming bangs on your toddlers. So you just want them to look natural and kind of raggedy. And uneven. Okay. So you can keep doing passes of that until you're satisfied with it. This hair is rooted to angle towards the middle. So it's thickest in the middle. It's going to have a tendency to pile up there. Okay. Isn't that pretty? Ah, beautiful rooting. I love rooting. My hands don't love rooting, but I love rooting. You can also trim the hair in a stamp. This is just a squirt bottle of distilled water, and I have a few drops of baby powder essential oils in it, so it just smells so nice and so baby like. So you may be able to see the hair better when it's wet, so make sure if you trim wet hair that it's wet everywhere. And if you trim dry hair that is dry everywhere, if you've got some mixture of wet and dry, that is going to be very misleading um, and really throw off how you're trimming the hair. So you can do either, just make sure it's one or the other. So now we see these little curls coming back. And because of the way that I rooted it, the hair piles up right in the middle. So you've got that nice little shape there. Okay, so as I'm looking at it, I see a few scragglers hanging out here. So because it's only five or six strands, I'm gonna go ahead and cut straight across. Because again, I don't want anything getting caught in the neck ring. I need that to be clear. So that when I'm yanking that sock in and out of the head, um, I'm not gonna pull out hair in the process. All right, so I'm gonna keep on rooting. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you so much for watching my video. Please subscribe to my channel. And I very much look forward to seeing you next time. <laughs>